I think seems to me that really leads quite nicely into our last performer of the evening, Jasmine, who said she was going to read some poems about love in the second half. Yes. So, I did hear that correctly. So, here is Jasmine and Corey. Say of sorts. <laughs> I wasn't correcting you. Oh, you're a very nice host, Patrick. <laughs> um, anyone here who's someone in their lineage really loves to cook? Mm. Yes. Mm. So sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> so um, my father was from Sri Lanka. Um, the only thing that I have really have of my Sri Lankan heritage is. Uh, uh, a very high spice tolerance and some melanin. <laughs> um, so this is this is kind of a love poem. Oh, it's high enough. Sorry, it's one tick, one tick away. I used to be able to do this. Thanks. Look at you. Well, we can't quite take me. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, this is a love poem to the spice rack, essentially. <laughs> Rack, sort of. It's called Elders of the Pot. They sit in a rainbow of reused jam jars, unlabeled, watch the traffic of the kitchen, hold proverb and gossip in their gnarled shapes and powders. Every wooden spoon is yellow to the neck. Turmeric, coriander, mustard seed land on the heap of inherited pans smoke their sour huck into the corners of the house. They lodge, stubborn in curtain fibres, carpet, catch at the back of the throat when the chili's capsaicin wakes up, beats its chest, a genie who gets too little sleep. Some are too fussy for the mill. Cloves, curry leaves require hours of simmer to unfurl their signature tang, then hide in slivers of tomato skin, lentil quicksand. Some wait until the table to shock the soft palate, extract the debris piece by piece, pull shards of cinnamon bark from the pouch of a cheek, cardamom husks. This alchemy is an art. The delicate oils can burn, render the whole pot a vat of bitter sludge. But get it right, and taste an ancient scale of notes that hum through veins, cumin, garlic, singing under the arms for days. You can smell it down the street. If we lost our sight on the way home, still we could fumble back. Follow that tune of olfactory tones, each mouth-watering gust of steam pulling like a sea siren until our nose is found the door, the hob, the pot, the lid. Vapour, embracing, spice, elders, all speaking at once. you love poems. <laughs> this is the only really true love poem. I lied slightly, sorry. Um, and I think I wrote this because actually it's quite hard to, to let someone love you. I think sometimes it's quite hard to invest in that trust, uh, particularly for me. And uh, so this is about learning to trust and it's called I Am Not Going Anywhere, I Promise. I'm not going anywhere, I promise. You tell me your arms around me like fleece. I have done my best to harden against all the love that came knocking, yet now here you are, surrendering like a stranger, approaching the house of an old ragged woman with a rifle and a German shepherd, both hands open above your head. You know she could let rip, Make dog food of you, but only see her skinny frame, her filthy nightdress in the cold March light. You stand steady in your jeans and brushed cotton shirt, shoulders broad enough to carry wood for the whole story of the night. 
As I fill with dread of times to come, maybe I'll flat, deserted, I'm sorry, on a paper bag. Maybe a hair in your jacket too long to belong to either of us. Maybe a red gingham tablecloth swept to a crash of crockery. Maybe the back of your head becoming smaller. You remain still there at the gate. The sky is darkening. You have put your collar up. And now I notice I am crying, but your arms have not moved from around me, so I'll try to turn down the volume on what came before you. And in my quiet way, like a small fire burning in an attic in a ghost town, I will let myself believe you. Watered down, I'm such a stereotype of a poet. <laughs> so, um, I have a lot of very loud women in my life, and they all seem to be married to silent men. <laughs> um, so, this is, <laughs> this is a poem for all the quiet men, like strong, silent types who don't say anything. Um, as I think they have a function. <laughs> silence has a function anyway. <laughs> So it's called Quiet Men. <laughs> Quiet Men, nestled in broad sheets, dank sheds of home-brewed ale, on allotments, thick fingers raking soil. Experienced with the quickly inflamed, your animal tamer voices can dispel fights with a palm on the shoulder, then walk slowly home. The night zipped shut like a tent. Men who make vaults of closed doors, who leave us ranting, straining against our own skin, a tomato on boil. Sometimes we gather, your partners, your sisters, huff over your muteness, polish your stone for mineral glint. I just need him to bloody say something. But silence is something you walk, yogic on its hot coals, that steady breath through all that stings. We flood our senses to avert its heat, but you've walked that narrow strip all your lives. From one edge to another, we walk across with you, learning to tread without fear. do this thank you so much Patrick for having me again oh, and thank you all for being so like in the room it's Friday night we're watching poetry radical <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really been a pleasure to speak to you um, this is the title poem of the book that hasn't been finished yet um, I've been I write there's a lot in it about grief um, there are fewer poems about grief now than there were before, which I think is a good sign. Um, but you can't, people, like in some cultures, you grieve for a certain amount of days after death, and I just find that like surreal because grief comes whenever it wants to come. It's like, hi, and you're like, oh, I'm still here. Um, so it's, it's called Ghost Worship, and I guess it's about honoring that. A couple walks past in the park, a dark man, high waistband, 70, a white woman on his arm, <clears throat> and the other world where my father is still alive slices past like a summer frisbee. Another day his reflection will turn up in a yoke, a workers cafe where twenty somethings and shades drape limbs over formica. Can't beat an egg and chips, he'll enthuse, smile swimming like a light spot. Later, he'll float in to snag the gaze of my sister as she walks the graduation stage, drift between seats for a better view, blow his translucent nose. He does this, sneaks up to change the slide, and for a second the world still has him in it. Afterwards, 
The face and jolt to the stomach flood to another vault of the brain. The days roll by. Trees carry on hawking resin over the cars of the street, but he'll visit again. A split second bomb to the heart. The city around us puts one foot in front of the other, as if everything were not a different colour now, though it is only the lost reaching in from beyond, messing with the settings. Thank you. Appropriate, I think, at this time of year, Jasmine invoking some friendly ghosts with her last <laughs> lovely poem. So, more applause, please, for Jasmine. <laughs> Before you go, uh, if you could put your hands together for the open mic poets who are Sam Lutus, Kudzanaya, Marin Nygaard, Rodney Wood, Andy V. Frost, and Jim Sanderson. You name my books are still available very recently. <laughs> a great debut uh, from Chloe Oric, please. <laughs> and once more for Jasmine and Kure. So thank you for coming to Open October. The bar is still open. If you want to keep in touch with us, leave your email addresses. And um, that's it. So it's been great. Give yourself a round of applause. Good night. Thank you very much.